Hello YouTube, if you were a previous SunTrust Bank customer who would often download bank transactions to a CSV file so that you could ultimately put them into your own Excel checkbook spreadsheet, you might have found that Truist changed the layout of the transaction file. They used to have the withdrawals and deposits in separate columns, which is how most Excel checkbook spreadsheets will operate. But Truist puts those withdrawals and deposits into a single column called amount. For example, this is a sample transaction file that I will use uh, to demonstrate things. So in this video, I'll show you how to record an Excel macro that will automate changing the layout of the Truist transaction file to be like the old SunTrust layout with separate columns for, for withdrawals versus deposits. This same technique should work regardless of your bank. If so, if your bank transaction file uses an amount column, but you like to separate it, follow along and this should work for you as well. So before we dive into actually recording the macro, what will the end result be like? So here in my sample, I've got transaction file that's been opened up and you can have just a single click button that once you click it, it then just automatically reformats the transaction file to have a separate withdrawal and deposit column. So how do we get there? I'll assume you already know how to download your truest bank transactions, which I will briefly demonstrate. I'll be blurring out some sensitive information, but you can see the download button here. And when I click it, I'll typically go with the 30 day option. It's a convenient single click choice. And the file type of CSV is perfect. So I'll just go ahead and click to download that file. I'm using the Firefox browser. So my download choices will show up under this button. And it's convenient for me to just click one of those open. So the first step will be to tell Excel to start recording your macro. You'll find that option underneath the view menu. At the end of the ribbon bar, you usually can where you can find the macros button. Make sure to click on the bottom part of that button, which is where you'll find the option to record your macro. You'll need to give your macro a name and Excel is sensitive about the file name conventions. You can't have any spaces or special punctuation marks. All you can do is just letters, no spaces. So for example, we'll do truest layout fix. It's super important that you make sure it's about to store that macro in the personal macro workbook, not in this workbook. By having it store in the personal macro workbook, Excel will have this macro available to you with future transaction downloads. The description won't be needed, so I'll just skip that and click OK. Excel will now be recording every action that I take uh, in my sample transaction file. So the first thing I'd like to do is to add a couple columns for withdrawal and deposit. So one way to do that is if I uh, click, do a right click on the letter F and choose insert, that very quickly adds another column. Alternatively, if I clicked on, in this case, the letter G, visit the home menu or the insert menu. Under the home menu, you also have convenient buttons for insert. So I've now got two new blank columns and I wanna go ahead and label this first, first one as withdrawal and label the second one as deposit. Totally optional step might be to highlight your column headings and uh, maybe make them bold or add some highlight if you want to. Totally optional, not needed at all. The main step will be to write some formulas to compute the withdrawal and deposit. So we'll start with this first item, the withdrawal amount. To start the formula, I'm gonna hit the equals sign on my keyboard and type in the word if, I-F. And I need to next have an open parenthesis. The syntax for the if formula is um, if, and then some logical test, uh, followed by a comma, and then what value do you want to appear if that if logical test is true for, versus what value you'd like it to be if the logical test is false. So we're gonna say that if the amount is less than zero, well then we want the E2 amount to be in the cell. However, we want it to be a positive number. So we're gonna multiply it by minus one. So I typed in an asterisk minus one. Now, if the amount is 
not less than zero. I, I still like just a plain old zero to be in that withdrawal cell. So I'll type in a comma zero, close my parenthesis, hit the enter key, and I now have that formula completed, completed in that cell. Next, I'd like this formula to be copied down. I could do a double click in that bottom corner to do so, but I need to be prepared for future transaction files that might have more rows than this current sample. So I'm just gonna click and hold down and drag my selection way past the current number because I need to, again, make sure that this macro is gonna work if maybe a particular time I have a really large transaction file. Uh, you might go down uh, you know, to 100 rows, for example. I'll stop at 75. So it has now copied that formula all the way down to the 75th row. I'm going to scroll back up and click in the first empty deposit cell and do my formula for this. So start with the equal sign, IF, open parenthesis. And once again, we're going to say that if the amount is now greater than zero, then we actually would like the E2 value to appear in this deposit. But if not, we want just plain old zero. So I typed in a comma zero. I'll close my parenthesis, hit the enter key, and there is my deposit amount. I'm gonna click my mouse back into that deposit cell. And this time I can do the double click. So if you're familiar with this, this trick, uh, as long as you get your mouse in just the right spot of that bottom right corner, so you see a black plus symbol, do a double click that will copy the formula all the way down to match with the existing formula in the withdrawal column. And now you might have noticed that I have values that are being rounded up to whole dollar amounts, which I really need the, the actual sense. So what I'm going to do is click hold down over F, drag over to G so that I've got both those columns highlighted and under the format choice here, I'm going to go with the currency format. So that has fixed my cell so that they show the, the full decimal amounts. Uh, next, uh, you know, I probably would like my sheet to have the column widths all expanded. So the fastest way to do that is if I click in that corner where there's that faint gray triangle. So I'll just single click right there. That has selected the entire sheet. Then if I move my mouse in between the seam of two column headings, like for example, right between, right between B and C and do a double click, that will automatically expand all of my columns to fit their content width. Now the last thing I'd like to do is get rid of the amount column because I don't need it anymore. Um, and while you won't necessarily run into this, if you follow the steps correctly, I do want to point out that if you just immediately go and try to delete that amount column by doing a right click on the letter E, for example, and choosing delete, you're going to get ref errors because your formulas are trying to reference a cell that's gone. So let's, let's undo that. Uh, so before you go and delete your amount column uh, while you're recording your macro, here's another step you're going to need to, need to take. I'm going to click hold down on the letter E, drag over to G to highlight both those columns. And we're going to do a copy and then paste special. So I'm going to go right over here to the copy button, or I could do a control C. And then right underneath the paste button, I'm going to go and find paste values. So it doesn't look like necessarily anything has changed, but it actually did. So if I click, for example, into any of these existing cells, notice that the formula is now gone and all I see are uh, numeric amounts. So I can now safely do a right click on the letter E, delete that amount column and everything's good. And I can now stop recording my macro. To, so to stop recording the macro, visit the view menu, click at the bottom part of the macro button and tell it to, to stop. As the last and final step, we want to make this macro easy to run by adding it to your quick access toolbar. Uh, so we'll run through that step. But I do want to point out that when you go to exit Excel, so I'll go to uh, close out of my Excel, and uh, I'm not actually going to save the changes to the sample transactions file, but I do want you to be on the lookout for this prompt where Excel asks if you want to save changes to your personal macro workbook.
be sure to say yes. Be sure to click on the save button. All right, so with that warning in place, how can you have your macro be an easy one-click button in Excel? So uh, Excel features a quick access toolbar, which could either be at the top of your screen, or it's also possible that it might be showing below the ribbon. So uh, here's where that quick access bar might also appear on your screen. Um, I'm going to have mine, though, show back up at the top, which is just my personal preference as to where I like uh, to have it appear. But the very last button on the quick access toolbar has an option for uh, more commands, which is a way to customize your quick access toolbar. So we'll go to that screen and you have a choice of either adding a button to just view all macros or have it uh, be a button that actually runs your particular macro. And that's what I'm going to suggest that you do. So change the category uh, from popular to be macros. And then here in the list, scroll down until you see uh, the entry for personal and then whatever you happen to name your macro. So there's mine. I'll click the add button to add it to my quick access toolbar. You can also do a modify and pick out a, an icon. I'm going to skip that step and just click OK. And I've now got my one click button right up here for my macro. And when I click it, it very quickly runs my macro. And there we go. And before we conclude, I just want to talk about the whole purpose for potentially changing the layout of your transactions file, which is that you probably are maintaining a checkbook register spreadsheet in Excel. So after you have downloaded your latest transactions, used your macro to clean it up, change the layout, then probably the next thing is that you might be copying those transactions to your Excel checkbook register. For example, maybe my uh, current version has transactions for early May, but not for uh, later May. So I'm just going to use my mouse to hold down and highlight transactions that are here and then use the, uh, the copy choice to copy it to my clipboard. And I'll open up my sample Excel checkbook register and do a paste. Uh, could do a regular paste. I personally prefer using the paste values option here just to make sure that the formatting stays consistent. So I've now got my transactions copied to my checkbook Excel spreadsheet and I can just continue on. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. Please consider liking and subscribing until next time.